Hi there. So I'm going to show you how to make a flat panel with my radiant braid stitch. It's a really old stitch. Um, I believe when I first had it out it was called um, cluster stitch and I did um, started to do a blanket with it um, which I later abandoned because I found a different project and then I just tweaked it a little bit and had it recorded as radiant braid because I liked that better and um, anyway so Radiant Braid is close to year old now and I'm finally getting around to making something in it so I'm going to make a flat panel and that flat panel can be made into a shawl or um, a cowl that is connected and I'm going to do a cowl um, using the gathering technique of Goodnight Kisses with her permission. Um, so that's the kind of cowl I'm going to make, but I'll be telling you um, how you can go about making the shawl because all you have to do is the same uh, cast on and then the bind off you just do one of the ones on my cowl videos because that's what matches a cast on and you will have a shawl and if you want a scarf you can just make it less wide. How you set up your loom. You're going to need even pegs and you're going to need two pegs for the beginning and two pegs for the end and I've set up my two pegs for starting so I can tell they're both marked they're going to be together and then my pegs for the end are both have a marker in and then I'm going to be using groups of two so these two pegs are always going to be wrapped together these two pegs are always going to be wrapped together these two pegs are always going to be wrapped together these two pegs are always going to be wrapped together and so on and so forth so you'll want to find a way to mark them and so you don't mix them up and you know that those pegs will be knit together so to start I'm going to use uh, my bind on that I prefer to use and it is um, one that uh, was used by crocheters and uh, it's kind of um, the one that is sort of a chain um, crochet stitch and how you do it is you put your loom hook in here you scoop up a loop and then you take the loop and you put it behind peg one and snug it up. Oh, I guess I should have told you the a uh, few other things. Okay, so we're on 30 pegs. I'm using a three-quarter inch gauge loom. It's a Cindy Wood loom. My yarn is a discontinued yarn, uh, so you wouldn't be able to get it, but it's Mary Maxim Studio yarn. So it is um, uh, acrylic with a large percentage of wool, 40% wool. And it is a thinner, um, bulky yarn. So a comparable yarn would be um, something the width of Scarfy. It would be uh, it would be your thinner roving yarn would be a comparable yarn with some wool content. Okay, so we continue like this. We just wrap behind the peg, snug it up behind the peg snug it up and we'll be snugging up this first peg by tightening up this string at the end. We'll put it here so we don't forget. And we just do this all the way around the loom. So I'm going to put you on pause and I'll show you how to end it when we uh, we get up to the end. Okay, so here I am and I'm just going to snug this up and here's the last peg and I'm just going to lay the loop over it, tighten it up, and then I'm just going to knit it over. Okay, and then I'm just going to go directly into the stitch. So when we go this direction, we're going to stitch, do a certain stitch. This is done in two rows. And when we go this direction, we're going to be doing another stitch. So 
the stitch we're doing this way is the first peg we're going to slip. We're always going to purl this peg. The second peg in on both sides is always going to get a purl both directions. And that is going to keep us from curling and that's the edge that in my swatches I thought was the nicest with this. Okay, now we've got our first peg pair. So what we do with that is we e-wrap the first peg. Then we are going to u-wrap these next two pegs. And I'm just going to do it loose because that works out to a u-wrap and flat wrap over it because I find that easier. And then we're going to e-wrap or e-wrap this peg. I was going to do it the fast way, but that's too fast for you. So I'm just going to e-wrap this peg and we're done that peg pair. So it's e-wrap, u-wrap, and then u-wrap, e-wrap on these two pegs. And you do it nice and loose. And the looser you do it, the, the nicer the stitch is going to look. So then we e-wrap, u-wrap, u-wrap, e-wrap. Okay, E wrapping, a U wrap, a U wrap, and an E wrap. Okay, and so here's your E wrap. And then I'm just going to do my U wrap by going just over very loose because it's much faster. And then my E wrap. And then my e-wrap here over like this and e-wrap again and e-wrap over like this and e-wrap e-wrap over in u-wraps and e-wrap, e-wrap, go over in u-wraps, and e-wrap, e-wrap, go over in u-wraps, and e-wrap. Okay, so the fast way I usually do it is I do my e-wrap, I do my e-wraps like this, and then I e-wrap like this, and then this one's already e-wrapped. I just do that kind of a thing, and then I do my e-wraps. So, like that. So, you might get to a point where you want to do it that way, but anyway, finish the e-wrap, and we do the e-wrap, the u-wraps, the e-wrap. We're at this peg, so we purl it. And then we do a uh, u-wrap here with the end peg and then we slip it and we purl again and that's what we always do on the ends okay now the next row we're going to e-wrap in two so we're going to e we're going to e-wrap these two pegs together we're going to e-wrap these two pegs together we're going to e-wrap these two pegs together so Oops, these two get e-wrapped. These two, and you do it nice and loose. You wrap the two unmarked. We e-wrap the two marked, the two unwrapped, the wrapped ones. And that's all we do. It's those two stitches. Okay, and then when we get to here, we do a purl, and I'm just going to do a purl to hold those all in because we always purl this peg both directions. Purl, 
you wrap, slip the stitch, and purl. And then we knit these over. Just like this. Okay, so now what we do, now that we've knit over the, the wraps in two, is we're going to go in and we're going to find all the loose pegs. And on the first row, they might be a little harder to find, but they're the long ones. There it is, right here. Okay, do you see this? It's a few pegs in and it's this really long string because these two are we're e wrapped together. And we're going to take that string and place it over the peg here with the marker. The one on the left here. Well, we're going to do the, uh, for the two peg pair, we're going to do the two peg pair on the left when we're facing this direction. We go in and we find the next big stitch, and this is it right here. And here's the two peg pair, and so we just pop it over on this one. So we're popping them over so you don't have any loose loops, but it's always going to be every second peg. But it's easy to find. It's the big long string. And we just pop it up on the second one. Oop. And we just do that all the way around. And we don't have to do the very last pegs here. And we don't have to do any here because it's, it's just not very long here. Okay, so there we go. Now, when we go back to do the row that we d go do over here, we just knit those right over. So we go into our E-wrap, our U-wrap, nice and loose, back into our E-wrap. E wrap and E wrap and U wrap and E wrap and that's how you do it. You do this stitch going that way. You do the double E wrap and take take the yarn over. This peg is always pearl. This one's always a U wrap and slipped. And so now you know how to do it. And it's starting to come. I went right into the stitch without anything because that's the best way to keep this, uh, this nice and flat and it looked fine and it worked great and my swatch is doing it that way. Okay, so we're just going to go for a while and then I'll catch up with you and um, I'll go over the stitch a little more as I get further along. But remember that when you're on YouTube there is a little button that's at the lower right corner with a, it's a little gear and if you click on that it can slow down the video so if you need to take a slow look at the stitch you can slow it down so it'll play nice and slow and that'll help you to see the stitch and um, I'm gonna take a little break and have my tea oh yeah I should show you this tea I have because this is the best tea I have ever had and it's from a little shop named Chai Baba that is in Kelowna, in downtown Kelowna. And this one's called Cowboy Bob, and it is so good. It's a blend of black tea, and it also has coconut rasps, organic espresso, almond flakes. I mean, so good. <laughs> Um, it's become my favorite tea. I don't want to drink anything else, but I find it rejuvenates me a lot when I'm making these videos. So anyway, I think they sell online too. It might be something you want to try out. 
because in all my years I've never had a tea this good. So anyway, I'm going to put it on pause and I'm going to come back when I've done a considerable amount of work. For the cowl I'm going to make, I want it to be around 35 inches long. Um, I'm going to do mine probably 32 because I'm short, but for a medium person, about 35 is the right length and I measured my last swatch that I did in this measurement and it was 15 inches so it was a nice size in this stitch. Okay so we'll see you in a bit. Okay so I've I've gone quite far and uh, I've just measured it and I'm 32 inches long and I'm 15 inches wide and I'm a short person, so I don't want to go too much over that. Uh, you might want to go up to 35 inches long for a medium <laughs> to large, and then longer than that for an extra large. And you can go wider. Um, it has to be divisible by two, as I said, but if you also are divisible by three, you'll be even when you do the gather message method on the end. So um, 30. Um, you'd go up to 36 for the next widest size. Um, 33 wouldn't be divisible, but you could do it um, 34 or, or, or 32 if you wanted. It just, um, you'd be slightly not as even in the reduction, but I don't think it would be noticeable. But anyway, so I'm just going to continue on here. And oh, I was going to show you what the edge looks like now that you're this long. So you've got this really nice um, slipped edge, nice and even. And it, on the back, it looks like this. You have this, this edge because of the pearl there. So even though when you're at the top, like, like I was showing you, it looks really funny, like is this ever going to look good? Um, yes, here it is. It looks good as you get down. Right? And, um, Oh, get off of there you and on the inside looks funny at the very top but see how it gets as you go down so this is one method anyway and um, so I'm gonna do one last row and then we'll do the gathered bind off so I continue double you wrap in two here double wrapping or not double wrapping, you wrapping over two pegs. Of course, you can just keep going and, and, and have a shawl. doesn't have to be a cowl. And if you need the bind off, you just go, I've got bind offs to match that cast on on all my cowls in my, uh, on my um, YouTube channel. So there's the cast off if you've decided to make a shawl and so there's the pearl and then I'm just going to do the slip stitch on the edge and um, do my pearl hold it in place put over my yarns in the every two pegs to balance it off all the all the big ones here. Oh, after I knit it off, of course, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> knit it off first. I looked at it and I was like, this doesn't look right. <laughs> so, knit them off. And put them over. Birds must think it's getting close to their dinner time, but it isn't. No. <laughs> okay, then we're just going to put over those strings. So we look for the long strings again, and we just plop it over. And I, again, we always put it on the same pegs here so it looks nice and even. Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go. Push it down and then <laughs> it's <all a> mess. <laughs> it gets big like this. <laughs> You have problems with the yarn and it winding around each other. Okay, so then we do the E-wrap on this peg. Wrap over the two pegs. Nice and loose. E-wrap, and I'm doing the fast method of E-wrapping two at the same time. I just thought I'd show you another row of this to make sure you see me doing the stitch. That may help and I also wanted to show you how fast you can actually do it because I was doing it slowly before so you could see how it goes but it actually is quite fast to do this shawl. <laughs> Watch what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just keeping it nice and loose. Okay, and we're almost back and we're going to do a gathered uh, bind off and Kristen from Goodnight Kisses gave me permission to use hers and I love hers. It really gathers it up nice and even. It's just really, really nice. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, she used it on her Rolling Waves cowl, which is a really nice cowl. So if you want to go take a look at that to look again at the Gathered Bind Off, if you think her um, explaining it helps you to do it easier, um, it's her Rolling Waves cowl. Okay, I'm just going to pause for a minute and give my birdies a treat so they'll be more quiet. Okay. So I had purled this one, but I'm going to take the purl out and put the loop back on because we're going to be binding off. So what I want to do is we're going to start binding off on this end and work our way back up to this end. And because we've done the kind of wraps we have, the pegs aren't all wrapped exactly the same. So we're going to do a row of U wrap. So we're just going to U-wrap down to the end. Boy, they ate that treat fast. <laughs> They're already asking for more. <laughs> okay.
Oh, there. Huh. I can't record. It's tangled up in there. Okay, now we're ready to do the gathered bind off. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We're going to take the working yarn, we're going to slip the first stitch, go behind the second stitch, or slip it too, skip it, and then we're just going to wrap the third peg. And then we're going to take the wrap off the third peg and move it over to the second peg. And then we're going to keep it on the loose side. And then we just knit that off. And then we're going to wrap it. And we're going to bring it over to the last peg and then we're going to knit that off. And then we're going to take this one, this loop, and move it down here. There. Okay, and now we're at the next three pegs. We're always working three pegs together. We're going to skip the first, skip the second, come over to the third, knit it off, move it over to the second peg, knit it off, give it a wrap, knit it, move it over, knit it off. And then we're going to move it down. We're going to move it down one so that we can move the other one down behind it. There we go. Now they're both moved down. Okay, here's our next three pegs. So we skip the first two, wrap over, move it on to the second peg, knit it over, Move it on to the, oops, huh. forgot to wrap it, <laughs> knit it over, give it a wrap, and then move it on to the next peg, and knit it over, and then we can start moving these pegs down. Okay, so we have three we're reduced to one here, three were reduced to one here. So we're going to end up with 10 pegs at the end of this because we have 30 pegs. And if you have more pegs than that, you'll have more groups at the end. Okay, so then we, we can actually tighten up the slack and we should do that as we go along. So you just pull on here, pull on the next one, tighten it up, pull on the next one. And we can just keep tightening it up as we go. There we go. I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit more. There we go. Oops. 
there. Okay. And then we're going to go over. There's our next three. We skip behind the two, knit over the one, move it over, knit it over, you wrap it, move it over, and then knit it off. And then we'll just move this one down, and we'll move this one down. Move this one down, move this one down. Okay, and we'll take some more slack out each time. Just gently working the slack. find it easier to do it with my fingers most of the time. Hmm. Now we do the next three pegs. At the end we'll just spend some time really really removing the slack. I'm just taking out the biggest slack here. Okay here's the next three pegs. Go behind, knit over, move it over, knit it over, move it over, and we've reduced again. And we just move these over. And every time we move them, we stretch them a little bit, so they'll be slack to move it uh, to uh, tighten up at the end. Okay, and we can move over one more. Okay, so you just continue like that, moving them over and tightening the slack a bit as you go. And I'll see you when we get uh, closer down to the end. Okay, I'm down to my 10 pegs and I've continued to pull up the slack so that here on this side, it's nice and tight. We don't have anything hanging down really long or anything anywhere. And you can take a look and if you see something like this one's a little looser, you can always just go and uh, just tighten that one and uh, snug it up as you go along. And um, then what we're going to do is um, mark our 10 borders. Um, you don't have to mark it if you don't want, but I came in and because of the way we did the edge, I picked up the two edge threads. So you want to look on the good side and make sure you get the outer edge because if you don't, um, it's going to look messier on this side. So picking up the outer edge, the two loops here, outer edge loops, outer edge loops. And so I just marked them so that when I'm doing it, I don't accidentally put the wrong loops on. I made sure that I got the outer edge loops. Okay. They're all on the outer edge. Because if we got, there's a lot here on the inner edge we don't want to pick up. So we just want the ones that are closest. So here, here's two here on the outer edge. So it's better to do this on the good side. Find the ones you're going to pick up. And then, um, okay, so you're going to join this to a side selvage edge. I've marked the one here and you're going to go in so that your wrong sides are facing and your good sides are what is going to get uh, done together. So I'm just going to take the first peg here and pop it on the number one peg. You could do these one at a time but I like to pop them all on. 
because then it's all set up. There we go. And I just pull them on with these hooks. Easy. There they are, all on. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm just going to pop off all these and knit them over so we're attached. Again, you can just take a look at the Rolling Waves cowl and watch Kristen's method if you'd rather do that one for gathering. Just make sure you get outer loops. Um, it's the same method, but um, she does them one at a time and I am um, putting them all on at the same time because this is the way I like to do things. because a lot of times when I'm doing it, I can pick up the wrong loop. And this way I just make sure that I have the right loops on here. And I'll just put them on there for now. And then we just knit this over. Knit them all over. Okay, and then it's all joined. And we just have to do the bind off. Hmm. Looks like I had one more than I needed here. There. Kind of had popped off. Okay, there we go. And we're all joined up. So, at the end of this, we're going to have a nice asymmetrical cowl. This will go over our neck, and um, this will be coming down in the front here to a nice little point. Okay. I really got the yarn all tangled up here, don't I? Okay, now we're ready. We're just going to do a basic bind off. Okay, so we're just doing a basic bind off. So we're just loosely knitting the outer peg, moving it over to the next peg, knitting it off loose, and moving it, knitting it off, Wrapping it loosely, knitting it off, knitting it off, wrapping it loosely, knitting it off, moving it over, wrapping it, knitting it loosely, moving it over. And you can e-wrap too if you'd like. That'll keep it looser for you. I'm just doing a U-wrap as I do it. And over to the last one. And knit it over. And wrap it one more time. And knit it over. And then I'm just going to cut my yarn. And pull it through one more time like that and take it off okay and then there we are we've got it all joined and I join with a u-wrap so mine's gonna look a little different than Kristen's and then I'm just gonna take this so here's our cowl and this will go over the shoulder and then this point is going to come down and you're going to be wearing it like this over the shoulder with the point coming down like this. It's hard to <laughs> imagine it, anyone wearing it right now but 
there you go and uh, it's basically all done and you're just going to take this and uh, even it up, take your your needle you're going to weave in the ends but right here where you joined it you might want to put in a couple stitches just to make that tighter there and um, stretch out your work and uh, you're all done basically I'm just gonna get my needle here and I'm just gonna put this to go through the needle <laughs> There we go. And I'm just going to sew together these edges. I'm going to put a couple stitches right here to just um, bring it together. There. Just like that. And then you just um, weave in your end. When you've weaved it in enough, you just cut it off and that's it. You're done. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, whether you made the cowl um, the way I just bound it off or whether you went all the way to make the shawl or maybe you made it less wide and just made a scarf. But it's a really pretty stitch. It would also be a really nice stitch to make a poncho out of. So I could have... Uh, gone a lot longer uh, maybe down to 60 inches and attached it on the side like I did here and you would have had a poncho at um, the the 15 inches that I am so there you go there's a bunch of ideas of what you can do with um, a flat panel like this and so uh, okay we will see you next time <laughs>